Digshoe.com. Greetings to everyone out there in the No DQ galaxy. Welcome to No DQ video here on NoDQ.com and the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Aaron Rift No DQ. We are coming off Super Showdown. I have your questions from twitter.com slash Aaron Rift using the hashtag no DQ turns 20. And of course, we are getting closer to no DQ's 20 year birthday, which is November 8th, 2018. First question today comes from Dave. With all of the constant teases, when do you see WWE pulling the trigger on a Dean Ambrose heel turn? Again, I'll believe it when I see it. Now, this past Monday on Raw, we did see another tease with Dean Ambrose possibly going off on his own and leaving the Shield. At the very end of the show, he was pinned by Dolph Ziggler in the six-man tag team match. Actually, he was pinned by Drew McIntyre, not Dolph Ziggler. And then afterwards, Ambrose walked out on his own. So what does this mean? I thought WWE was going to be done with this storyline after Super Showdown since Roman Reigns is going on to a singles match at Crown Jewel. And I still think there's a possibility at some point Ambrose will feud with Seth Rollins as a heel. We haven't seen a heel Dean Ambrose on his own and I think it should be done, but Again, I think WWE is going to milk this S.H.I.E.L.D. storyline for as long as possible. And I think we're going to see them as a group for a while. I don't think there's going to be a breakup anytime soon. Maybe, if we're lucky though, by Royal Rumble time, Ambrose will finally turn and we'll get heel Dean Ambrose versus babyface Seth Rollins at WrestleMania. I'd like to see it, but again, I'm not going to get my hopes up. Got this one here from Aaron Rift is the new Messiah. All right. With Undertaker and Kane versus Triple H and HBK locked for Saudi Arabia, could you see this leading to Taker versus Kane and Triple H versus HBK in singles matches at WrestleMania next year? No disrespect to them, but those matches, particularly Kane and Undertaker happening in 2019 is just sad. I don't think we're seeing Kane versus Undertaker, first of all. I think there's a possibility we could see Shawn Michaels versus Undertaker one more time, but if Shawn is going to be doing a series of matches, and now that he's coming out of retirement, he might as well. I think it would be silly for him to come back for one match and then be done. He's coming out of retirement. You might as well go all the way with it. He might as well have a final run, do a couple of matches with some of the younger guys. The obvious choices for me are AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan. I think that those would be the two big matches to do with Shawn Michaels. I have no interest in seeing Shawn Michaels versus Triple H again, and I really don't see the point. The point for Shawn Michaels coming back, as far as I'm concerned, is for him to do some fresh matchups, some, something we haven't seen before. So I think, I think it's unlikely that we see Triple H versus Shawn Michaels. I would not rule it out knowing WWE, and I think there's a chance we could see Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels, but I'm hoping we get to see something else. Got this one here from Future Shocker. With SmackDown 1000 coming up soon, do you see any possible seeds being planted for a possible WrestleMania match? For example, I think Batista has said before he would love to face Triple H again. It's possible, but normally WWE doesn't start planting seeds for WrestleMania matches until Survivor Series at the earliest. Usually WWE waits until around the Royal Rumble. Every now and then we get a tease at Survivor Series, but that's only when WWE has a clear cut direction of where they want to go. Like for instance, 2003 with Goldberg and Brock Lesnar, you had the Survivor Series segment with each guy holding the title and that was planting the seeds for the WrestleMania match. But in this case, I'm not sure if WWE has anything set in stone 
for WrestleMania. But yeah, you could do a little subtle tease with Batista and Triple H maybe. But again, going back to that previous question, if Batista's coming back for one more run, I know he wants to face Triple H, but I'd like to see him against somebody different. I'd like to see Batista versus Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. I say go for that. Do something different that we haven't seen before if Batista is going to come back. This one comes from Chris. Hey Aaron, what feud would you say was the greatest in SmackDown history? Mysterio and Eddie, Undertaker and Edge, or JBL and Cena? Well, definitely not JBL and Cena. Mysterio and Eddie Guerrero did have a memorable feud. I think I would have to go with Undertaker and Edge. I think you look at the history of those two guys, Edge cashing in money in the bank on Undertaker in 2007, and they would feud on and off throughout that period. Their feud continued into 2008 with the WrestleMania match, of course, and then the TLC ladder match, and then finally the Hell in a Cell match at SummerSlam. They had quite an extensive feud on SmackDown Live with a lot of memorable segments involving Edge and Vicky Guerrero and Undertaker. I think that would be my top pick as far as overall feud goes on SmackDown. But what do you guys think? Leave a comment and let me know. Got this one here from Garrett. Since Braun Strowman is more than likely not winning the championship anytime this year, what's a more likely scenario? Him winning the Royal Rumble and facing Roman Reigns at WrestleMania or getting drafted to SmackDown and going for the title over there? Please do not suggest another Braun Strowman-Roman Reigns match. I really don't want to see that again, but at this stage of the game, nothing would surprise me. I'm trying to think of potential opponents for Braun Strowman as a heel. I'm just not a big fan of him being a heel at this point, but it is what it is. Now that Bobby Lashley is a heel, I feel like for next year's Superstar Shakeup, it would make sense to draft one of those two, either Strowman or Lashley. But I have this feeling, and this was something I talked about a while back, I could see Roman Reigns possibly going to SmackDown Live with SmackDown debuting on Fox, in which case I think Strowman and Reigns are best off being separate. So if anybody goes over to SmackDown, I could see it being Roman Reigns and then Bobby Lashley with Strowman staying on Raw. And at that point, we'll just have to see who's on Raw, who gets drafted from SmackDown and figure out something for him. But as far as now until WrestleMania, that's a great question. I really don't know. And, and that's why I do fear that it could just be Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman, WWE might go back to that, do one more match at WrestleMania between those two to settle their feud once and for all. All right, this next one comes from Jake Lake Carpenter. Hey Aaron, what do you think is the very best WWE title change of all time? Personally, I think it was the Eddie Guerrero No Way Out one. That's definitely a good choice. I think that that was a very memorable WWE title change and No Way Out with Brock Lesnar. Definitely an emotional moment. And of course, a month later, we really cannot talk about it. Chris Benoit winning the world title and then him and Eddie Guerrero celebrating in the ring together. Of course, Daniel Bryan winning the title at WrestleMania 30 is a big one. Going back though, I think my favorite one is probably Mankind winning the title from The Rock on that January 4th, 1999 edition of WWE Raw. I mean, that one was just so emotional because of Mick Foley's rise to the top and everything about it was just a, a really tremendous feel-good moment in WWE history. And Mick Foley, despite WCW giving away the result, Mick Foley having that big viewership and the big rating for that match, it was just really cool. So to me, that was the one that always stood out the most as maybe my all-time favorite title change. But there have been a lot of great ones. This one comes from Sonic Jackson. Which crowd heat do you think was better? Roman Reigns on the Raw after WrestleMania 33 or Elias on the October 1st, 2018 Raw? Well, that is depending on what you consider to be good heel heat. Some might say Roman's heat was not good heat. Elias, at least, was being a heel. He was 
ripping into Seattle and he was actually getting a heel reaction for saying something that a heel would say. Roman Reigns was getting heel heat because he was the baby face that the fans don't want as a baby face beating The Undertaker and the fans thinking that Reigns had retired The Undertaker possibly. Um, but yeah, the, the Roman Reigns reaction was very interesting and that was also the night after WrestleMania. So you have the most diehard of diehard fans there. In a way, I think the Seattle one was even more impressive because it was just something totally unexpected. I think going into WrestleMania 33, we all knew Roman Reigns was going to get booed out of the building. It wasn't a surprise. The Seattle thing was definitely something that people were not expecting and came out of nowhere. So I might actually give the edge to Seattle and also because it was very sustainable. Although I think the fans would have kept booing Reigns um, if he didn't do anything, if he just kept standing there, I think they would have booed him for like 20, 25 minutes. Who knows? It would have been interesting to see how long WWE would have considered dragging that out. But eventually Reigns, of course, had to say um, his one little line and then leave. This one comes from Mr. Yuck. In what capacity might Kurt Angle return GM or in-ring action? Is there any last title run for him or just to put guys over? Title run, I don't know. I know he has been training, though, to do more matches in WWE. And, of course, he's now part of the World Cup tournament at Crown Jewel. And I suspect there will be something with Baron Corbin. There has been speculation about Angle versus Corbin, maybe a Survivor Series-style match with Team Angle versus Team Corbin for the general mannership role. I could see that being a match at Survivor Series, and I think Angle will do a match every now and then, maybe the Royal Rumble, maybe WrestleMania. I think it's unlikely, though, we see him with a title reign again. I, I don't think it's going to happen, but anything's possible. Never rule it out. I just feel like at this point he's going to do a few matches here and there and then eventually retire. This one comes from James. Hey Aaron, John Cena is posting a lot of videos of himself working out, getting pumped and shredded. Could you see him possibly coming back with a slight character change, possibly as a heel that loves himself? Would be strange, but it could work. Don't think so. Again, anything's possible. Never say never, but I don't think John Cena's turning heel. He's basically transitioning into a part-time superstar. He's doing his movies, his other projects, and every now and then he comes in for a match. Um... I don't see the point in him going heel if he's not going to be around on a regular basis. I think if he, if he was going to be on television every week again, then yeah, it would be nice to see a change. But like I've said before, I think the ship sailed on that a long time ago. Should have been done 2012 in my opinion. Now, there's really no point. He's not around all the time. He's a legend, basically. He's becoming a legend. So just let him come out do his thing every now and then, and, and let it be. This one comes from They See Me Rollins. Is Finn Balor dead on WWE? He went from being the best thing on New Japan and NXT to hugging Bayley with no storyline. How long before he goes back to Japan with Nakamura? Depends on how he's feeling. I mean, if he's making a good living doing WWE, he might stick around. It's hard to say. I definitely think he should have gone to SmackDown this year. Um, maybe he'll go to SmackDown in 2018. He does need some sort of change. And what that is, I don't know. The easy answer is, of course, heel turn. But I like him as a babyface. I just think he should be doing the demon more often. And I think he would be better off on SmackDown. Get him in a feud with somebody like AJ Styles or even Randy Orton. Just... A change of pace. He needs some fresh opponents, something different. We've already seen him work with Rollins and all the guys on Monday Night Raw, Elias, you name them. I think he's best off going to SmackDown next year and just having some new opponents to work with. Got this one from Rollins versus Styles, please. What qualifies as a 100% clear as day, no doubt about it, heel turn? I think Bobby Lashley this past Monday on Raw would be a clear heel turn where he wins the match and then afterwards 
he comes back to the ring and continues to beat on a guy while he's down. And Bret even talked about this. Bret Hart mentioned for WrestleMania 13, he was starting to move in that heelish direction um, slow but surely. And then at WrestleMania 13, after he beat Austin, just to make it clear to everyone that he was in fact a heel, he kicked Austin when he was down. That's a heel thing to do. Um, so to me, it's always very obvious when somebody does something that is not what you would normally expect from their babyface character. Like Batista, when he turned heel against Rey Mysterio, Batista would always help his babyface partners, whether it was Mysterio or John Cena, you name it. Batista would always be there. He would be a stand-up guy. And then with Rey Mysterio, Mysterio is like begging him, calm down, and then Batista throws him into the barricade. That is an obvious heel turn. So you can tell when it happens, and um, if, if done well, it, it's usually great. Batista was a great heel turn, and I think Lashley this past Monday was a great heel turn. That will wrap things up for this edition of No DQ Video. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please share this video on social media. Tell a friend about No DQ Video, and I will see you guys next time.